Brooklyn Independent Television. We're here in Tillery Park. It's summertime out here in the city, We're catching some of the summer breeze. And joining me is the head coach of ASA Junior College football team, Dennis Orlando. Coach, welcome. You're going into your third season. Can't yep. believe it. Yep, time has time really flown by. Uh -huh. Time has really flown by. You guys did really well last year. Also, 7-3, you played in the championship conference game, first time in the conference, and also you played in the game. Yeah, no, it was a, uh, it was a great season. You know, uh, we had that sophomore class we had. That was actually our first full class to, to come through the school that came in as freshmen. And, uh, you know, we were really excited about, you know, how the season went and, and you know, those guys signing and moving on and, you know, kind of validated the program in terms of what we're capable of and, and what, what what you can accomplish here as a student athlete at ASA Junior College. Right. I mean, as far as, especially the players that you have sent on, I mean, they've all gone to BCS schools, or several of them. Yeah, no, we had we had quite a few. Gosh, we signed, uh, we was 15 Division One guys, and, and uh, you know, I'd say, gosh, at least 10 of them were, were there in the spring semester, uh, played spring football, and there's going to be a lot of them starting and, and playing on TV this year. And, you know, we're excited to continue on and follow their careers on television, and, and we're excited for the group that's coming up behind them, too. Northeast Conference, so you're in that conference. You were number one in the nation in defense also in junior college football. Yes, uh, that's That's big. That's huge, especially your team's only going – Last year, you were in your second season, and you were number one in defense. You know, uh, we had a lot of really good players. You know, uh, we were we were sophomore late on that side of the ball, and, and uh, you know, those guys did a great job. And, and you know, it was, it was more of uh, the thing where, you know, really good players make smart coaches. Right. You know? Now, also, I mean, let's go over some of the teams you played last year. Also, you played Grand Rapids. Uh, you defeated them. You lost to them 21-13. Yes. You know, uh, Grand Rapids came in. They were, I think they finished up third in the country, one of, one of those deals. Uh, we played them uh, in, at, at Old Boys High Field in, in, uh, in Brooklyn, and, and it was a uh, it was a really good game. You know, it just kind of came up a little short, but uh, you know, it's tough. You know, when you're a young program, there's certain hurdles and certain lessons you got to learn. You know, at, at, to get to the to championship level, and that was a good experience for the program. And especially playing establishing teams, teams that are well established, like a Grand Rapids. Definitely, definitely. You know, it's it's always you know the. But, you know the program. Our program has made a jump every year in terms of talent and and uh, that, those kind of things. And and you know when when you when you get into games where you're it's your second year and you're playing schools been playing football for 30, 40, 50 years. You know uh, it's it's a hurdle to overcome. It's a and, hurdle to overcome. And you have a reputation as a team. Now Hudson Valley, you defeated 51 nothing. Dean College also, you won 26 13. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a good game. They were. Uh, Gosh, they were they were two three time defending conference champs. Uh, we actually played them at Lincoln uh, High School in, on Coney Island, and uh, you know it was a good experience to get over there and, and play somewhere different in Brooklyn, and and you know it gave us a chance for you know other people in, in different parts of the city to see us, and uh, you know we came out and played a good game and, and got the job done and moved on to the next. Now week. Rowan is also in New Jersey. Rowan JV, right? Yes. And you also defeated them 17 to seven. Yes. Yes, you know, I uh, got a chance to play a lot of guys, and, and you know, those games are always good for the program, you know, to make sure that everybody's getting filmed. Alfred State also, uh, you defeated them 31-7. Uh, Delaware Valley JV 46 to nothing. Lackawanna, uh, you lost to them 21-17. Yeah, you know, uh, it was kind of a thing where, where turnovers, you know, kind of bit us in the butt all year, you know, and uh, you know that was a game where turnovers caught up to us, you know, and uh, we played against a really good football team that. Took advantage of, of the opportunities we gave them and, and played a real played a really smart, sound game, and, and they came out with the, came up a little bit short. And you also defeated Erie, 27-8, uh, and you lost to Nassau College, yeah, 47 to seven. Yeah, you know it was a thing where you know it was a it was the first championship game that the school played in. Uh, when it was a winner take all situation. Uh, and like I said, you know the turnover battle killed us. You know, and uh, you know that's just something we just gotta got to concentrate on and emphasize with our kids to, to make sure uh, a situation where the turnovers that happened in that game don't happen again, and I'm sure the next time we play it will be a different story. Now, is that your rival also, Nassau? Yeah, well, we, you know, we'd like to make it our rival. You know, we got to win one of these. So. Right. <laughs> okay. You know, when we come back, Coach, we're going to continue our conversation also about uh, players that have moved on, where have they gone yeah. also, and who you're playing this year. Gotcha. Okay. We're going to continue our conversation more with Coach Dennis Orlando, head coach of ASA, right, right after this. We're back here at Tillery Park in downtown Brooklyn. Like I said, it's summertime here in Brooklyn, 
and there's all this happening. You have kids over there playing, uh, young kids playing soccer. And also we're talking about football here, junior college football here in Brooklyn, ASA. Joining me is the head coach, Dennis Orlando. Coach, seven and three last year, but this year, you know, who knows what could happen, right? You start practice yeah. with in August. Yeah, August 1st, you know, we'll start. Uh, you know, we're real excited about, about this group that uh, came in here as freshmen. Um, and we're excited about the, you know, a good handful of guys we have coming back. You know, uh, the one thing that, that last year the sophomore class did for us is they really opened the doors in terms of the, the type of athlete that now wants to come here. You know, and, and they, they lay great groundwork in the sense of, hey, if you come here, these are the things you can accomplish and these are the opportunities that are available to you. And we got a great response in recruiting this year. Now, you also signed Wayne Williams of uh, <clears throat> Lincoln High School. Yes, you know, we're real excited about Wayne. You know, Wayne's probably the highest profile kid from the city that we brought in here so far. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're looking forward to coaching them and, and getting them better. And that's a Brooklyn kid, too, which is really good for the school and for Brooklyn. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. I know, you know, uh, Wayne's a kid that takes pride in that. And, you know, I know that was part, part of the reason he wanted to come here was he wanted to help build this program and, and, and put Brooklyn football on the map nationally. And, you know, and the thing is your team is beginning to re really gain a great reputation as far as junior college football because junior college football, as far as I know, is mostly pretty credible in the West Coast. Yes. California, especially. Yes. Texas. But here in Brooklyn, you're gaining a foothold. Yes. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the best way to do that is, is to make sure these kids are getting the most exposure we can possibly give them, you know. And, you know, last year with, our guy, with all the guys signing we had and that kind of thing, uh, you know, really brought a, the national spotlight starting to come here a little bit and it's coming from, you know, Division one college coaches and, and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, we're doing it the right way. Now you have two players from Ole Miss that are going yes. to Ole Miss. One player from South is going to Southern Miss. Another one is going to East Carolina. Who are those players? Uh, the two kids that are uh, going to Ole Miss, one is uh, Ivan Nicholas. He was uh, from Jacksonville, Florida. You know, he's an outside linebacker, safety kid, great player. Uh, brother starts for the Atlanta Falcons in the NFL. Uh, signed with South Florida out of high school. Uh, didn't make it academically, so he came here for two years. and. And uh, the coach and staff got fired at South Florida, so you know he wound up with a Southeast Conference scholarship. So you know we was pretty pleased about that. Uh, Gilbert Payne is a upstate New York kid. He's from Yonkers. You know uh, he came up here. He was, a little, he was he was out of school for a couple of years. Came down, decided to give it another go, and you know he's going to be lining up against Alabama and Auburn and all those guys next year. Uh, Joseph Blanks was a all-state linebacker from North Carolina. Uh, played in the all-state game down there. Played in the Shrine game. Uh, didn't have the academics to move on out of high school, came here and he came here from the first day. His dream school was East Carolina. And, you know, I guess you can make, you know, his dream happen for him, but he did it through hard work. And you have all, uh, two more going to Western Michigan. Yes, yes. Uh, one is a, uh, actually a big offensive lineman from uh, Washington, D.C. Um, and another one is a cornerback from uh, Glade Central High School in well, Florida. One player going to Bowling Green and three players going to Temple. Yes. The, uh, Which the, Temple also had a second round draft pick in the NFL, Jaquan yes, Jarrett from Fort Hamilton. Hamilton. Right. Yes, yes. No, and uh, you, know, the, uh, you know, the two kids that uh, are going to, going to Temple, uh, one signed with Hofstra out of high school. Obviously, it was a good thing. Maybe it was a blessing in the skies that he couldn't go there and came here. They dropped their program. You know, he wound up at Temple. Uh, you know, and the other kid was a South Jersey kid. The kid we have at uh, Bowling Green was a uh, was a kid from Far Rockaway. Uh, went to Beach Channel High School and came here and just improved every day. Really worked hard, and he was out there in the spring, and he's starting for them going into the season. Uh, and we also look at as far as offensively, what type of offense do you run? We're a pro style offense. You know, uh, we want to play with play with balance. We want to be able to do both. You know, but you know, we definitely we're going to establish running the football. You know, and uh, we're going to start with a tight end and a fullback. And then, you know, when we get into our spread sets, we'll spread it from there, but that's our base. Defensively? Defensively, we're a 3-3 three, three stack team. Uh, we emphasize speed and athleticism and, and, uh, and aggressive play uh, in terms of pursuit and, and playing with a high motor and that kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, those are our two, you know, those are our two styles on defense, and they've been pretty successful for on defense and offense, and they've been pretty successful for us, you know, the last couple of years. All right, we're going to, uh, when we come back, we're going to continue our conversation with Coach Dennis Orlando further in the show. Welcome back here at Turley Park in downtown Brooklyn. Joining me is the head coach of ASA College, junior college football team, uh, Dennis Orlando. Coach, when, when you look at your team, as far as in key positions, who are some of the players in the key positions also, quarterback, running back? those type positions, gotcha. offensively. 
you know, we're, uh, you know, last year we, we signed 15 Division One kids. That means there's 15 guys that started last year that aren't here, you know. So uh, we're replacing a lot, but I think in a lot of, a lot of situations we're replacing it with more talent. Um, you know, I guess if you want to talk about returning players, you know, we have uh, Gabe Smith from Washington, D.C. He's, he's a returning starter, a fullback. Uh, Bill Bilo is a, a returning center from uh, New Jersey. And uh, Nikki Hankagen is a, a Fort Hamilton kid. He's going to be starting a guard for us. You know, after that, pretty much the, the, uh, the positions are open. You know, uh, we have three quarterbacks right here uh, battling for it right now. And we have another kid who will be coming in for August and, you know, he'll join the fight. Uh, you know, we have two city kids in, in, that, in that battle and those four guys. Uh, one is uh, Demir Dukovic. Uh, he is from uh, Bayside High School. I believe he led the city in passing a couple years ago. A uh, big, strong arm kid and uh, a kid, uh, Christian Lopez from the Bronx, who's a you know real cerebral player and makes good decisions and he's a heck of a leader. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the quarterback battle shapes up, but we probably won't know. As soon as I know, I'll let you know. Running back. That's what I was Run, back. You know, running back, it's going to be a battle with a lot of new guys. Uh, gosh, you know, some of the guys off the top of my head. Um, kid Tamir Turpin from New Jersey, uh, signed with Akron out of high school that make it. He's with us now. Um, kid AJ Clanton. Uh, from North Carolina. Uh, he was a back-to-back uh, 25-yard -back rusher in high school. Uh, Deron McBride, uh, who's a returning player for us. He's from New Orleans. And, you know, there's a handful of other guys, too. You know, a, lot's got, a lot is going to be determined through camp and, and through August and that kind of thing. And but, you'll uh, start camp where at Old Boys? Yes. Old Boys. Now, and also, now your season kicks off on August 26th. You'll play Albright JV. Yes. Yes. You know, it'll be a, it'll be a good opportunity for a lot of guys to get, get reps and, uh, you know, I'm sure the position battles will continue on through that game. Mm -hmm. uh, defensively, what do you look to? <clears throat> How many players are we replacing defensively? Gosh, defensively, we're <clears throat> excuse me, we're replacing eight. You know, we have, uh, gosh, we have some real strong, strong kids that you know we, we think are going to be great players here for us. And, and you know, on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, really think in two years these guys, as long as they, we keep them on track academically, they're going to have their choice of a lot of Division One BCS type schools. Um, you know. Uh, we have a, a safety returning. Uh, Josh Rivers is a really good player. You know, he played on the weak side for us. We're probably going to move him over to the free safety. Uh, you know, he's probably the guy that kind of spearheads the returning players. We have a player who sat out last year, uh, returning, played our first, played his first year, Aaron Font. You know, and he, he's he's a, he's done a great job with the leadership role. And you know, we think he can be a really good player. Your too. captain? Who's going to be the captain? Gosh, you know, we'll we'll, we'll see. Like I said, it's a really it's a really young new group. You know, and uh, we're going to look for leadership from within from the sophomore class. Has there been any overall surprises for you as far as on your team and just the whole atmosphere as far as for the school and for Brooklyn? You know, the, I guess the, the, the biggest surprise, you know, going into our third year is the depth of talent. You know, we were very talented last year, but we were very top heavy, you know, whereas, you know, from player 15 to 30 on our roster, we're, we're way, way, way ahead of where we've been the first two years. And I think that's really been the biggest difference is, is the depth of talent that we've been able to accumulate here. Mm -hmm. And also, your, your school is great because it gives those players who are, or perhaps thought they could go maybe to Division One another opportunity, maybe to retool themselves and then go back at it. Definitely, you know, and, and we definitely understand what our place is in these kids' lives, you know, and, and we look at, you know, we tell them, you know, hey, we're a stepping stone. If the biggest thing you ever do in your football career is play at ASA, then, you know, we did something wrong. You know, our job is to get you on the bigger and better things, and, and uh, you know, that's the philosophy we, we've used with our guys individually, and, and uh, you know, we'll continue on with that and, and keep producing, uh, you know, quality, uh, potential student athletes for four-year schools. And also, Coach, if they want to find out more about your program, as far as all the players are looking to come out, how can they contact you? You know, the best the best way to go about it is get on the website. Um, if, if, you, if you feel like, you know, you want to come down and play or you can go to school here, you think this might be a, uh, uh, a situation where you could thrive in, go to the website, asa.edu, go to the football page, and there's a recruiting page with directions on how to contact us. And their season starts August 26th against Albright JV. That's a wrap up for us here at Tillery Park. Watch this and other Brooklyn Independent Television episodes online at brickartsmedia.org slash BIT.